Hello everyone. In this short video we're going to continue our series on super elevation in Civil 3D. This will be part 5 in the series where we're going to take a look at super elevation along a tangent. So my colleague Jeff Bartles made a series on advanced intersection modeling back uh, a year or two ago. And if you go through that series you'll see this technique applied in that real world example. But I wanted to post it here specifically so there was a single point video on this particular topic. So let's get started. So what I have here is a tangent that is made up of three components or three tangents. And I have a, if you look here, I have a sample line. That's at station five or five plus zero zero. Here's a view of that particular section at that station. We have no super elevation applied. The shoulder and lane slopes are the default. Here's the assembly that's coming from, just so you can see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some super elevation along this tangent. So the first thing we're going to do, just like always, is uh, select the alignment. And we're going to go to super elevation. And in this case, we can calculate, create. And just like before, it says, wait a minute, you don't have super elevation. Do you want us to do the wizard or do you want to go straight to the curve manager? Well, this is a time when we will actually go directly to the curve manager. Notice it's empty, but this is where we're going to start. So just one quick note, the alignment does have a design speed of 40 miles an hour. And we set uh, the design criteria. We turned that on, although we're not going to use it. But uh, we did have design criteria set on this particular alignment. So the method we're going to use here is creating a user-defined curve. As I click on that, and I apologize for the screen real estate here. Move that over. I click on create user defined curve it's going to say which entities in other words if I have multiple tangents or other elements which one do you want to control well I actually want to put super or control the slopes of the entire uh, alignment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first component or sub tangent I want to pick the next one there's two selected and then I'll go up to the last and you can see at the bottom I have three so I'm going to press enter and in the curve manager, it puts in these transition out, in and out details. But we're going to move directly now to the tabular editor to make our changes. So I'm going to close the curve manager now. All right. So move this around a little bit just because we have uh, some real estate issues at this resolution. But notice we have a user defined curve, which I can rename this if I'd like, or I can just get started. So I'm going to go to the plus sign to add a critical station and it's going to ask me where do you want to start so I'll just do from the end point and then I'm going to make another you can see here place that particular station then I'm going to place another one at the other end there we go so now you can see I've got my normal super elevation columns I could go and just set the slopes in other words, I could override all the slopes as long as my subassembly, if you remember, has the super elevation toggled on. And uh, the other piece is can it accept super elevation, which we talked about in previous videos. So if you look at this particular section view over here, we've got this is going to be left lane outside, this will be right lane outside, this will be left shoulder outside, and this one should be right shoulder outside. I intentionally left a little bit of an issue so we could kind of experience some real world troubleshooting here because this is a very common mistake that I made here intentionally in this case, but it's a mistake nonetheless. So I'm going to go to my transition in region and I'm going to add a station. And I'm just going to select about a third of the way down, just a random station, and then I'll do the same on the transition out. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my beginning and end slopes to the normal cross slopes that we have to begin with. And then I'm going to transition to some varying slopes through this range where the sample line is. Okay. So for my left outside shoulder, which this should be this little 2% shoulder here, to begin with I need to be at minus 2%. 
and I could modify this, but just remember it's going to start immediately with whatever slope I put here if that outside shoulder is turned on for that segment. Now if that random one-third station, let's assume that we go ahead and change that slope to a minus four. Let's do something drastic. Then on the transition coming back the other way, we're going to do a minus four. And then we'll transition back. To a minus two. Okay, so we're done with the left shoulder. Now let's look at the left outside lane. You can see that that's a minus two percent. And the uh, slope that we're going to transition to, we're going to go to minus one. And we'll be a minus one here on the back side. And then we'll go back to minus two. Let's go over to right lane outside. That was a minus two as you can see, normal. And we're going to go to minus one, then a minus one, back to a minus two. And then last we're going to do right outside shoulder. You can see that, that normal cross slope is five percent. And we're going to transition that to, let's do something just to match the other side, even though that's drastic. Minus 4. And then back to a 5% to finish. There we go. So now the super elevation is stored in that particular alignment. Notice my corridor is flagging me to be updated. Let's right click and rebuild. Okay. So immediately we're looking at station five here. This is in the middle, so we should be where the slopes are completely finished with their transition. Remember, and uh, let's go back and look at it. Let's go to the, I want to right click on the edit, take a shortcut here to edit super elevation. And I'm going to go to tabular editor. And just uh, move a little real estate here. There we go. So just to remind here, what, what should we be at here at uh, station five. Well, we should be at 4% on the left outside shoulder. We are. We should be at 1% on the lanes, and that's good. But on right outside shoulder, I said to go from five to minus four, and it did not go to minus four. So this would be a common area of troubleshooting that we would need to do. We told it to be here at minus 4%, and it did not at all. So what do we need to check? First thing we need to check is the assembly. So I'm going to zoom into the assembly used at this particular corridor. Select it. I'm going to go to Assembly Properties. Okay, on construction, this is on the right side. You can see my right lane is looking for super elevation, and it's looking for right lane outside, which we already, we already proved that that was working, so we expected that. But notice here on the little shoulder piece, super elevation example 2 is the name of that subassembly. And it's actually telling it to use the right lane outside slope. Notice how the shoulder would taper. I've got two over here, and both of those are looking for this super elevation that, uh, and this could have been, I could have selected it in error, you know. But uh, regardless, it's just going to match the lane. So let's see if we can correct that. So we want to do right outside shoulder slope. There we go. We'll do it for that one. And then we'll drop down and do it for this one. Okay. Already getting a warning on our corridor. We'll do a rebuild. And there we go. So you can see there's two slopes going on here. There's a, that first slope was for here. And the next one was for that uh, gutter. And you can see now I pull those both down to 4%, which is what I expected from my changes. So I hope this video will come in handy the next time you need to drop some super elevation along a tangent. Have a great day.